Okay, we're ready. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is George McGowan. I'm an IT program manager for Vertical Apps. It's a small um, IT company based out of Arlington, Virginia. I um, want to be mindful of everybody's time this morning, so we'll get right into it. So today's topic is driving and embracing innovation in government spaces. <clears throat> so first question, I want to just raise it out to the audience. Like, what do you guys think are like some of the most innovative companies right now? Like, what comes to mind? Probably your Amazons, your Apples, your Googles, places like that. Y'all will probably be surprised to know that the government, the federal government, outspends them by trillions. The annual revenue of Amazon is like $1.3 billion. The government spends $7.7 .7 trillion almost every year. So I want to just put that in perspective before we kind of get into today's discussion because there's so much opportunity within the government and I'm sure a lot of you guys are either consultants or wanting to be consultants, program managers, leaders in your careers. And so I'll start with that. So there's a couple myths about the federal government. A lot of people always think, oh, they move so slow. It always takes forever for me to get my tax return. Um, or it just takes forever for me to do s small things. So what I do and what my company does is really try to help and support the federal government in coming up with innovative techniques to achieve their missions. Um, right now, I am a contractor for USCIS, and one of their missions is to help people get citizenship into the country. So that's a huge mission when you think about everything going on in Gaza right now, Ukraine last year, Iran, all of those things. So there's a lot of refugees that are trying to get into the, com into the country. So that's just one aspect of areas within the government that need innovation. So I just want to get a sense of who's in the room. How many are you uh, federal consultants right now? Just raise a hand. So we got a nice mix of people that are federal consultants right here. How many people want to be federal consultants? Again, so we got a lot of people in here that want to help the government achieve their mission and drive innovation. Um, what are some innovative tools that you guys can think of off the top of your head right now? Chat GPT. You got you have one? Artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, a lot of different tools, right? Sonic. Um, so that's where we're leading. That's where um, you know our lives are going to be going. We're going to be ruled by AI. I mean, I'm doing this presentation off my phone. I don't have. Uh, I forget what they used to call them things when we were in middle school, elementary school. It's just kind of projector, but you know we've got a lot of um, technology, and so you look at the government and they have a lot of mundane processes that have been established for years and it's like how do we update those and so thinking about how you drive that innovation is really going to be to for you guys and for me as well to try to be creative leaders um, so I'll stop there one one aspect of just being a creative leader is just having an open mind you know, um, there are people that work in the government right now that have been there for 40 years. And so you guys have customers that have been there and they just don't get it. It's like, I, we've been doing this like this, this is the process, but those processes are old and outdated and there are new, better ways to do things. So what, what I do right now is an innovative product called RPA. Who's familiar with RPA? Got my, my two brothers over there. So RPA is Robotics Process Automation. And essentially what that is, is configuring code on people's computers that allow the code to do the job for you. Um, so you guys might have financial reporting that needs to get done, um, dashboards that need to be created, and you can, with the press of a button, 
have that report or dashboard or financial report generated in seconds, minutes. Um, and so that's one of those things that, you know, is really going to be leading the change. But how do we take all of these ideas, all of these products, and kind of pull them together to come up with an innovative solution for a government project, a government contract, when there are millions of budget dollars that the government is trying to spend to get people like us to help them out. So I want you guys to just kind of think about the opportunity there for you to be able to really come in with some solution base and really try to drive value to those federal customers because they're making decisions that impact our lives, the amount of taxes that we pay, um, how quickly we're able to get goods and services, um, all, all those types of things. One second. So the first thing I would say is always kind of keep value and keep your value proposition um, first. And the reason I say that is because the customer is going to ask for something that they don't want or think they want something, but that's not really what they need. And so as a contractor, as a, as a consultant, you guys want to be trying to think about what's the actual value proposition that they really want, as opposed to, hey, they say they want X, but they really want Y. So with that value proposition, you, you are already going to be thinking about what processes can we embed, what type of governance can we establish to be able to make their vision become a reality because that's all we're really doing is taking their idea and executing it. So I want you guys to think about the value as you guys are executing on your day-to-day -day, um, duties because that's where that's where the fun or that's where the the impact really really resides. Um, how many of you guys are working in agile teams? Any? Wow, that's a, that's a big raise of hands. So you guys know historically that the government has always kind of done predictive waterfall projects and how slow they can be, how a waste of money they can be on resources because they are saying, hey, I need this person to build this website, but they build the wrong type of website. So there's a lot of waste in the government and that's what we want to try to avoid is that waste. We really want to try to get to the value. So I'm enlightened to hear that so many of you guys are working on agile teams because I think that's an effective way for you guys to really drive value a lot sooner. Um, it, it, it allows you guys to continue to move the goalposts um, when your clients are being challenging. When their idea of what they want is shifting you guys can immediately come in and kind of change that or, or course correct, I'll say that. Um, so that's amazing that you guys are, are working in Agile teams. I think that is one of the big things that moving forward, a lot of commercial and federal companies are moving to, just a faster way of getting products, processes, services, to their to the customers, to the clients, to the people who are going to be using whatever the whatever the product is going to be. So that's that's one thing I would say is to continue to try to work in a agile fashion or as iterative a fashion as your client or customer will allow, because there are some agencies that are just outdated and very strict in what their what their mission is and how they deploy services so I would say try try your best to um, just really be efficient in what you guys are doing because it is again challenging to get that customer who has been doing the same thing for 20 years to change their mindset um, I come from a change management background and one of the things that you want to do is like remind people that change is good um, because so many people, especially in the federal place, are adverse to change. They don't want anything to be different than how it's been. So 
the technical innovation is almost less important than changing the personal mindset. Um, so you guys should really be, try to become people leaders and, and not a people pleaser, but try to convince your clients on why there's value in making shifts. Um, because if you could change their mind, the technology will follow. I mean, you guys are technical leaders or growing to be that. And the code works every time. The code's not going to fail you. The people and the processes need to be reconfigured so that the code can do what it needs to be able to do. That makes sense, everybody? Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I'd like to hear what are some challenges that you guys have been experiencing in your roles? I got three hands, so I'm going to just start with my brother over here. How you doing? I'm willing yourself. So that's, again, back to the point about people and relationships. I think it's very important to build a relationship with your product owner, which you say you are at, at sometimes, but you also have a product owner on the other side, correct? Yeah, I mean, I think that's classic project management. Like, you got to manage your scope, your cost, and your resources at all times. And they're spending millions of dollars, 27 millions every three months. So they should be mindful that their scope is moving, the goalposts are shifting, you are overpaying people that are doing the work, and they're probably not being as effective. They're probably doing six hours worth of work and charging for eight hours, right? So they're not doing what they should be doing. What I would do in that situation is rally my sponsor as well as my product owner and say, hey, this is what you said you want. This is what our goal is. This is what we are trying to achieve at the end of this project. 
we need to look at our plan, whether agile team or a predictive, we need to look at our plan and adjust so that we can meet our goal because who wants to waste money? So I would really try to, again, change their mind, make them understand the scope and the severity of what they're doing and the decisions that are being made on a day-to-day -day basis and how it's impacting the work that you guys are doing. When people can see that their dollars are being wasted, they'll change super quick. This is like, wait, what happened to that million dollars? You want that million dollars back. So you really should just try to have a candid conversation with them and the, easy, the better your relationship with that person, the easier that conversation goes. But you have to let them know. And, the, and this goes for any role or any of you guys on your team. Again, we're driving value. So you should be knowing what, what the impact of some of these tasks are and what's the negative impact if it doesn't get done. Because there's always threats and opportunities. Um, so I hope that answers your question. I hope that helps a little bit. Yeah, that's a, a classic people issue, man. You just gotta, you gotta talk to those folks. And I know it's challenging these days because COVID, everyone's remote now. So I used to be able to see somebody at the water cooler or go up to their desk and get some answer now, where now you might have to wait 15 minutes for email reply. If it even comes in 15 minutes, you might be waiting hours, days, um, Slack, you know, and, and again, use some of these new innovative products to, to try to help you guys communicate a little bit more efficiently because Teams is slow. Um, there's a lot more stuff that you, that you can leverage. Um, but that's a people issue. And I think, you know, as we try to drive innovation in these federal spaces, it's also it's imperative to change those folks' minds. I got a question in the back. Hi, Iris. Okay, perfect. I see that with some of my employees all the time. I actually hired a guy um, back in February. He didn't get cleared until August. So it's like, what do we do in that time gap? Um, it's a stress on the team because you're trying to get hit the ground running and be impactful. And that government process of onboarding is just the government process of onboarding. And the, depending on what agency you're supporting, that's going to take three months, six months, 12 months. Your situation is unique because you have a secret. And so that secret should almost trump everything else, especially on you. It's probably a public trust contract that you want. So. Ah, so. Exactly. But you, but you know they don't. I think my brother over here might have an answer for your question. for office, we see the things that are happening. We've seen what happened in the past four years. 
that people haven't gotten access to things that they should have gotten access to. Okay? They were friends, family, all kinds of things that's happening out there that are and, and uh and I'll be brief because I don't want to steal your thunder. But but again, that are happening out there. So when the government has to now take a step back and making sure we got the right people in the right places. Okay? And I applied for this job of uh I have a uh top secret FBI, meaning that I can get into the White House, okay? When I applied for the position, I went in with my security clearance, okay? Well, that position, security started all over again from ground zero and picked me all the way back up, okay? So these are the process that's happening, and that's why it's been slow. There's a whole bunch of other folks that are competing to get their security clearances in there. So it's not such that we also know that the government does not have tech. Okay, and who's operating the government? It's folks like us in here. Everyone has their own personality. We talk about change management. Some folks have been doing it for 20 years. Some folks don't want to change. Okay, and you're getting, instead of using policy and guidelines, you're getting opinion. Okay, that also impacts on how fast you move. However, just be patient. Take what they give you, and even in the business, if you're a contractor, okay, remember who has the first grant. Okay, so you operate with them and give them the best that you can, also give them a value proposition, and those meetings are very important. You need to have those meetings with your team, with your government, and what's being offered. So uh, I'll, I'll leave it with that, because I can tell you, I could talk for a whole hour about this, because that's my life here. Go ahead. I appreciate you, my brother. Nah, that was a perfect response. I'm Lex. Oh, Brianna Williams here. I'm a data science group and a data architect. Really something tangible is that um, when you go into those security processes, ask what uh, coding or what technologies they're using, right? And that downtime, get the presentation so once you get ramped up on the team, it's no lag time. You already know what's going on. You just need to learn the history about the team or the clients and things of that nature. But learning the technologies your team is already using so when you get onboarded, you'll know it's no lag time. That's perfect. Okay. Um, I've been handling that for like the last two years. I think, again, it's how you frame the situation. Hey, I'm gonna give you this process that you are now gonna run. It's gonna take away your manual duties that you've been doing, but now you have the opportunity to do a lot more thought provoking work. Um, so you need to kind of broker that conversation with them and let them know, hey, instead of you doing that report, now you can spend more time practicing on getting that information or that data because all these agencies are data driven. We're going to be able to have a conversation with management and leadership to be able to show what the value and what the impact of that is. So really, to answer your question, making sure that they realize their job's not going away. They contract, they can't really effectively get fired, especially if you're a federal employee. Your job's not going away, but now you have more time to do different type of work. Hey, this is Mary Kate and Frank. <laughs> Google Sheets will travel to everyone's in their life easier, right? 
Yeah, uh, certainly. There's actually an app that I recently saw where friends can kind of plug in their whole trip itinerary, so it avoids the Google Streets, and it actually says, I'm going to get that back to you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying, again, but that's... but. And that's a great segue as I get ready to wrap up is that there are thousands of innovative products. There's people like you guys with great ideas and great business cases, and we're trying to bring those to the forefront. And so I would say embrace change. Don't be afraid to fail. In fact, fail fast so you can course correct as soon as possible and really um, just bring that impact. Yes. No, it's not clickbait. <laughs> it's not clickbait. I'm going to give you a totally different perspective. Uh, so my wife owns a cosmetics company. It's called Vivanti Cosmetics. That's a shameless plug. Um, but <laughs> they are now lash tech robots where you can literally sit on a bed and the robot will do your lashes for you. Crazy, right? But that robot needs a technician to monitor the robot's activity. So it's weird because I watch my wife do lashes. It might take her an hour and a half to do like a full set of lashes. And I'm looking at the robot do the same job. I'm like, well, the robot is actually a little bit slower and it needs maintenance and it needs monitoring. So yes, you can use that product to do it and it might save, save you money from your bottom line, but there's still always gonna have to be that people function. And we gotta real, we're the leaders. We're driving it with these, what this artificial intelligence does. So, yeah, all the science fiction stuff. It, there is opportunity where AI can go rogue, but I don't think we're gonna see that too much in our lifetime. Uh, so I got three more questions, and I gotta wrap up real quick. Um, so, like with the specific, the specific job AI talk engineer, is there like a real job that's out there that's top of the line? Kind of? I'm not familiar with that okay. particular role, but I'm sure it's something. Yeah, um, that's tough because I was at a, a a small business a small business event. I would really try to gain. You you need to try to build relationships with those procurement offices, especially for the type of work that you're looking into. And the odds, but then I think that's how you say the name. And try. Over. So you gotta you gotta know what the government wants, so what I'll have an idea, almost thinking ahead of the government 
and then knowing he's coming to the plate. You can just basically have him trying to pull a fast when he comes out. That's the only thing you can trust him. Other than that, once the RFP comes in, he makes his take for it, and he's done. He makes it a selection. All right. Thank you again, my brother. Um, yeah, that's my time. I got to wrap up. But what I will say is that you guys should be thinking about how to drive value in your spaces that you're in and always try to bring that leadership mindset to your customer and to your client. Um, I'm going to be in suite six over there for any Q&A wrap up. So um, I'll meet you guys over there. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it.